I want a mage setup, but not just any mage setup, a setup worthy of the highest floor of the catacombs, Master Mode 7. But why? Dungeons and Skyblock gives you a lot of freedom with what kind of playstyle you want to pursue. For about the first 15 minutes. After that, you're either a Juju Non, a Hyperion Mage, or a Terminator Archer. Using any other weapon? Good luck finding a party that wants you. Running Master Mode is like walking out in the middle of China. Everybody looked the same! There are really no weapons that can outclass the Terminator. Being a bow, it is clearly intended to be used by archers, but it is significantly better than basically any other weapon in Master Mode. Its Soul Eater enchantment allows for low damage classes like Tank to contribute to clearing in the dungeon, and the amount of healer items in the game directly correlates with the amount of girls the average Skyblock player talks to in a day, which is zero. Most Master Mode parties are incredibly racist to true tanks, which is a name given to players who only use a tank setup and don't own a separate set for clearing, making them significantly less efficient compared to archer tank hybrids. The relevancy of Necron tanks, which are tanks who are able to survive with just Necron armor and a baby yeti, further propelled the popularity of archer setups in Master Mode. But finally, we reach the subject of this video, the Mage class. Mages in Master Mode are split into two categories, Fake and True Mage. Fake Mage refers to players who fulfill mage responsibilities, such as gyroing in M6 or mana draining in M7, but use Necron armor and a Terminator, while True Mages are players who actually use mage setups, relying on mana-based attacks and mage beam. They're also among the rarest kind of players in Master Mode due to the sheer cost of everything necessary, but True Mages are the only ones who don't clear with the Terminator, and it's this diverse playstyle that makes me want to go for this mage setup. Speaking of diverse playstyle brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a turn-based fantasy role-playing game with stunning graphics available on mobile. That means you have access to a game with PC-level graphics basically anywhere you go. With an ever-growing expansion of over 650 champions, you'll definitely find a style of battle that suits you. There are several ways to improve champions in Raid, such as leveling them up in combat, upgrading their rank by sacrificing other champions, or equipping them with the wide range of armor and weapons that the game offers. The weakest champions can become the most powerful if you play them properly. The top 3 coolest champions in Raid include Jintoro of the Shadowkin, Kalvalax of the Knight's Revenant, and Staltis Dragonbane from the Banner Lords faction. There's really no better time to join Raid than now because this month's update has added a brand new dungeon and even more champions being added to the game too. Raid has also released a new legendary champion based on MMA and wrestling legend Rana Rousey. Whether you are new or a longtime player, you can unlock Ronda just by logging in for 7 consecutive days between now and February 20th. You can also use the promo code on screen now for in-game rewards such as 500,000 silver, a 3-day XP boost, and 5 full energy refills. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get even more exclusive rewards in Raid. If Raid sounds like a good game for you, you can scan the on-screen QR code or click on the link in the description to get started with over $30 worth of bonuses, such as the free epic champion Aina, 200,000 silver, and much more, available to new players only for the next 30 days. Thanks again to Raid for sponsoring this video. But it won't come cheap. I will need two sets of Storm, a set of Ancient Storm with full Legion 5 for LCM, and a set of Necrotic Storm with full Wisdom 5 for RCM. I will also need a level 200 golden dragon with 1 billion coins in the bank and an Astrea. And finally, the centerpiece of it all, the 10 star Chimera 5 Dark Claymore. All of this will have a price tag of over 6 billion coins, which is unfortunate because when I made the plan to acquire all this, I had 0 coins in my purse. Luckily, I already had the golden dragon and 1 bill bank because that was a part of my archer setup and the Astrea, but everything else still wouldn't come cheap. I needed a few ways to make money to save up this fortune. Thing is, when this plan was put into motion, it was September. I had just gotten back to school, and all of those hours spent downtiming in class were coins flowing away, which is why I decided to construct an AFK slime minion farm. I put half a billion coins into this minion system, which was risky because it could be nerfed at any time. Every morning before class or every night before bed, I'd set myself up on the farm. With this, I was making around 2 million coins an hour, doing literally nothing. I ate like 200 million coins worth of booster cookies so I could profit off the bits that the cookies would generate, and with everything set up, I got myself into a routine. I'd AFK most of the day, and the couple of hours that I did spend online, I spent entirely in Master Mode 4, running out second Master Stars. Within a week, I had made a billion coins from these two methods alone. My confidence was at its absolute peak. I would acquire the mage gear of my dreams in mere weeks at this rate. I was unstoppable. The week after, I'm hit with a reality check. I am very much stoppable. The price of slime dipped over 33% from 3,000 coins per enchanted slime ball to below 2,000. Although the slime farm was still going strong, its profitability had been cut by a large margin. 
All master star prices dipped significantly during this time, which cut M4 profit rates, but gave me the opportunity to purchase the ones I needed for my gear. With these hunches on the road, the rate in which I was saving up money slowed a lot, but I was steadily collecting everything piece by piece. Enchanted book here, master star there. With this, I set up buy orders to begin crafting Chimera 5. One of my friends, Kimmy, dropped a dark claymore and was willing to sell it to me for a lowball of 369 million coins at the time. After several days of listing and delisting, I finally gathered enough Chimera books to not only give Powliner Chimera 3 for his birthday, but also craft Chimera 4 for myself. Although the Claymore was far from maxed, having it meant I could play Mage for the time being. Watching my damage increase with each upgrade really motivated me, so I felt very inclined to fork over a lot of money. I applied full Legion 5 to my LCM set, and every time I had spare coins, I'd spend them on another tier 7 enchantment. I never realized just how expensive tier 7s were, until I realized some of them were going for over 200 million coins each. However, with some help from friends, I reached a point where the only relevant upgrades I still needed were First Strike 5, the 10th star, and the upgrade from Chimera 4 to Chimera 5. Combined, this would still cost me almost 1 billion more coins. I began running around my island looking for chests for anything I could sell. I started using the Forge and Dwarven Mines to craft items to sell for profit, and I kept AFKing each night. The Slime Minion AFK farm was in shambles, now at half the efficiency of what it was when I originally built it, so I stepped up the dungeon grinding. I, I spray the dragon. Oh, okay, that didn't work. Uh-oh. Nice one, Kev. <laughs> now that I had my own Claymore, I no longer had to wait for a mage to run M4. I could just play it myself. With Paul in office, the prices of all dungeon-related items dropped, so I managed to upgrade my Elsium set from 7 stars to 9 stars, and my Claymore to 10. Mayor after Paul was Aatrox, and something completely unexpected happened one night. I had dropped my second ever Overflux Capacitor, which is insane considering I only have like 300,000 spent XP, but at this point I was very satisfied with my progress. My LCM set had 9 stars, all the necessary enchants, and full perfect gemstones, while my RCM set had 7 stars. I want to upgrade the LCM set to 10 stars eventually, but the Claymore is only missing First Strike 5 and Chimera 5, and that is the priority. Nez came through with his second contribution to the set and bought me First Strike 5, though I only needed a few Chimera books to complete Chimera 5. Unfortunately, Diana left office before I could acquire all the books, and without her, Chimera skyrocketed in price. They won't drop until the next Diana Mayor, which would be who knows when. So now, we wait. I genuinely think it took over a month and a half for Diana to return as Mayor, so this video has kind of just been sitting in limbo for a long time. But finally, I got all of the books I needed, and at long last, I had the final piece for the mage setup. Yeah, I know. You can't even want to, but it's better than AFTD. Chimera okay. 4. And then boom, boom. Oh, you should have clipped the three bows thing. That's funny. Yeah, you should have. That was, that was fun. Three months later, I completed it. And now, it's time for some M7 mage. I guess I'm still missing one final piece of the setup. The skill required to play mage.